Hey guys, we're camping for team back at it with another video for you guys, and we are back with more Don Machi as we finally get the ending to the boss battle with uh Aisha, Wealth, you know, everybody. And uh what an episode, what an episode that it seems like they overcame fate in a different type of way. And we actually get a huge revelation that, no, the floor boss wasn't going to be what did them in. It was going to be actually climbing up, trying to climb up to the 24th floor that would have did them in. But we'll get into it. So let's start off with uh, Belle and Lily. Well, really, we start off with a flashback of, uh, not Belle and Lily, uh, Belle and Ryu. Um, we start off with a flashback of ryu when in a way when she first joined the astrea familia um and the one red-haired chick uh i think her name was uh ali 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 Ise, um or ali say um and everything and you know that's she comes across her and that's when she pretty much joined um the astrea familia we cut back to the present um, and pretty much it's obviously the same thing they were in the last time we saw Bell and Ryu. Um, Bell was only, you know, pretty much sleeping for five minutes to just recuperate whatever he can do to recuperate. Um, and Ryu's just making the mention of the fact, well, you know, I just have to get him to the 36th floor. If we get to the tunnel where the 36th floor is at, then we'll be able to, um, well, we'll be able to at least have hope in getting out alive well at least for bell um so their whole target operation is to get to the 36th floor which i guess is the ending of the deep floors um which okay um that's their goal they got to go up um uh, while we have it to where our characters and by the end of the episode which i'll get into a bit are they're headed down to find them so it's gonna definitely be interesting to see what is going to happen but in the meantime we see that the skull sheep end up showing back up the three skull sheep and even though ryu um has practically a broken leg um and she's barely able to fight she actually manages to take two down but the third one ends up almost killing her and if it wasn't for bell um showing up then boom um he, she would have might have she might have been dead right there it seems like in order to defeat these skull creatures, you have to give them a good hard blow to the center of their, I guess, skull or something. I guess that's why they call them skull sheep. Um, but, you know, that's kind of the thing there. They kind of just sit back and, you know, kind of chillax. Ryu again apologizes for everything that, you know, she's just going to hold them back. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Belle's like, don't think about that. You know, it's my turn to watch out and be like, oh, you get some rest and everything. And then she just has another dream about the Australia familiar and um, Ali, uh, Ali, Ali C, um, which again, if I'm butchering the name, I forgot. I think it's start with an A. Sorry, I don't have any notes down. Um, and it was just kind of this thing of like, you need, you know, her telling her like, you need to listen, Ryu and everything. Um, also she called her, uh, Leon because she didn't want to call her Ryu because she kind of, she thought the name was too hard. So she started calling her Leon, um, which I thought was nice. So I think as we get more with, um, the Belle and Ryu situation, we're going to get more of that backstory. We're probably going to get more of the backstory of the connection she's had with, of what the connection Ryu had with the other Australia members and more than likely how they ended up dying. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting um, to see that point. But a majority of this chunk of this episode was taking down the um, Am Am Amis Amphis Baina. Um, and, you know, we, they had, our party actually did it. They overcame the odds and everything. And with the way last week was the last the way the last week ended you know it's absolutely crazy that coming out of this week this scene this week um seeing them all alive all together yeah i literally thought i'm like wow you know i it's absolutely crazy absolutely insane how they all managed to get out uh, get out of here alive um but we get a good chunk of the episode dedicated 
So we're thinking like, okay, Makoto's more than likely dead. Harahime is more than likely dead as well. We're all screwed. Um, it's over. You know, we 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 have um we have um I'm trying to find his name. Um, do, 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 do. We're, I'm trying to find his um. Hold on a quick second, guys. I'll find his name real quick. I need to take some damn notes. All right, I'm back. Uh, we see how Aisha and Oka, they just start charging in because they're thinking people close to them are dead. And, you know, that type of approach, it isn't working for them. You know, things aren't going too good. You know, they don't know what the heck the Am Amphis Baina is going to do. It's absolutely crazy. It even goes underwater again um, to throw them by surprise. And then I thought, I honestly thought Oka was down for the count when it came up. He literally was like in the air. Like he had to be a good 20, 30 feet in the air. And then just falls flat on his back. And it's somehow he still gets up. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is absolutely crazy. This guy's just, honestly, this guy was just, Oka had honest to goodness utter will and determination to try to beat this thing like it was that insane in the meantime you have pretty much cassandra pretty much saying like is this it is this where we all fall is this what my premonition my prophecy said um but no we have it to where we see makoto is still alive she, yes she's got these piranha like monsters still biting down on her but she pretty much is unle unleashing that gravity spell to hold down the Amphis Baina. In the meantime, you know, you have Oka telling, well, Faye, fire off the freaking sword. Fire off the, you know, fire off the magic sword. And we see how in a, um, Welf, he fires off in a way, a direct pathway to the Amphis Baina that Oka is on. And pretty much the Amphis Baina is trying to fight the gravity pressure, but, you know, Makoto's putting everything into it. And we see like you know even if it kills she goes on it's like look even if this kills me i gotta do this and not only do we see the piranhas you know they end up being defeated because the pressure is so much um we see how oka goes down he gets his axe he unleashes uh, i forgot what the attack was called but he unleashes he cuts off one of the heads and i was like okay good we're good and i'm like all right so if makoto's still alive then that gets to the moment where you see okay um Haruhime is still alive. And I was like, yes! So we find out the reason why Haruhime was still alive. Now, she was wearing the cloak um, that Belle had, the one scar cloak. It seemed like she was wearing a cloak that was similar to the same materials um, that Belle's uh, scarf had. Um, and we know about that scarf. It's kind of like a lucky st scarf. It protect pretty much gives you a boosted defense a boosted like shield if you wear that so it seems like she must have wore that um cloak on as the amphis banner fire attack happened so then she wouldn't end up getting attacked by the fire and she wouldn't take any damage or if anything she would have died so she does her pretty much her boost you know spell she boosts up um aisha aisha goes in and probably one of the most badass ways to take out a freaking carrot take on an enemy Go straight into the fires, unleashes her attack, and freaking reflects it back at the Amphis Banus, and thus defeats the Amphis Baina, um, and absolutely, um, you know, they win the fight. I was like, they did it. I, they did it. I was like, okay, hold on, hold on. I'm just gonna, I hope there's nothing else that messes up their fact, their victory. Um, and I was just having like, you know, the fact that they defeated a floor boss when it looked like the odds were stacked against them, man. They absolutely did this. And mind you, outside of Aisha, these are a bunch of like level twos and level threes. So, you know, they're not really the strongest, but it's was absolutely uh, crazy to say the least. Um, just how much it took out of them to win this fight. I mean, heck, maybe if the Amphis Baina, like, I guess you could say, didn't adjust to what they were giving them, maybe they might have beat this thing a lot earlier, um, and they would have not suffered as much damage, because we see, although it's great that they won this fight, the problem is, they do have a few people who can barely stand, and they are still, 
somewhat injured on their feet and you know they just need some time to rest and recuperate now you know i was like okay everything seems nice but then all of a sudden you just hear these rumblings and the next thing you know i'm like oh crap the floor is the floor is caving in on itself um and everything now they end up actually seeing um the one the one of jura's minions from evil is i forgot his name they're running up they're running up to try to get to the 24th floor so in the meantime you know the the other characters are like all right we need to climb up there and follow behind them so then we can get to the 24th floor and we can get up to a higher ground and everything but the thing is lily and wealth or well really lily is like well we just can't leave we got to go find master bell um and they're like we don't have time for that we're gonna we, we you know we we need to go up to lower ground and then we'll just tell other people we'll go up get to the mid-level floors rest and recuperate and then we'll go back down and find bell but lily's having none of it she's like no we need to go to the 26th floor and we need to go find master bell and even wolf gets on this he's like yeah i agree we gotta go find him we ain't going nowhere unless we find this guy um and they're like come on man this is it makes no sense why would we we barely have we're barely standing we're all battered and bruised. We got people that can't literally stand and defend themselves. And you want to go down a floor lower to go find Bell? He should be fine. Um, and everything. And all of a sudden, that's when Cassandra, before going on Cassandra, she starts putting two and two together. And she ends up realizing that, no, we have to go to the 26th floor. And then, obviously, that's when she starts telling Daphne, or, yeah, Ta da Daphne, and she's like, hey, we need to go to the 26th floor and she and Daphne is like wait what the hell are you talking about and she's like listen in my premonition I just fallen like I think they spent a mention like she was using like the light of the sun you know I, I guess it's like a reference to Bell in a way he's that light in the sun right then and there if we go to the 26 if we go to the 26th floor we'll be safe we'll be okay if we try to do what we're trying to do escape we might face doom now daphne we already know that she never trusts she doesn't trust cassandra's um premonitions and everything and i'm just like now when this thing was happening i was kind of getting a little bit pissed off i'm like just go i'm like okay it makes sense just go to the 26th floor if you feel like it. that's the safest course of action um but i don't like the fact that daphne's so like against his premonition i'm like with everything bad that has happened and the, everything that she said leading up to this back in the first half of season one you would think you would believe her you would think you would believe her finally and i you know i was saying like you know after this whole incident is over with you would have to go and consent tell cassandra like you know what i believe you because things got real we could have died if not for your premonitions um helping us and everything and they kind of have a spat argument between the two um you know the thing is you this crystal falls i literally thought the crystal hit cassandra and she was gonna die and that would make taffney like okay we gotta go um and everything but no you know cassandra pretty much goes on to say like hey you know i know you don't trust my premonitions but everything but please for once just trust me the person you know and everything and she just Daphne, Daphne just grabs her hand. They start running. She's like, all right, let's go to the 26th floor, everybody, and everything. So, um, yeah, and then, you know, obviously she gets emotional. Daphne gets emotional. She's like, I may not trust your premonitions, but I believe in my friend because Aisha was like, why are we switching up? And pretty much Daphne's just saying, like, you know, I don't trust, uh, I don't trust, you know, my friend's premonitions, but at least I, I'll believe a word she says, which it makes no damn sense. If there's one issue this episode I don't like is just like that, I'm like, all right, fine, okay, whatever. Um, yeah, they get to the 26th floor. We actually see Jura's minions, the evilest members. They actually fell from where they were climbing, and they make a mention like, "Oh crap! If we had probably tried to climb up, that would have been us. We would have probably died." And you know, that's probably what cassandra saw she probably were that's what her premonition was hinting the fact that if they had climbed up went and climbed up to the tried to get to the 24th floor they would have all fell down probably lost their footing fell down because of everything that's coming down and the next thing you know most of the cave would have floor caved in on itself and they would have cried it would have crushed them to death um and that's probably what you know cassandra was seeing so that little swerve of us thinking that no 
it might be the boss that takes them out. No, the floor would have actually taken them out. And how the fall that they would have had taken would have probably killed them on contact. Um, each and all of them, especially with the fact that they were practically, you know, let's be honest, they're a fight, they're on the brink of death for most of these characters. So, yeah, the, um, you know, they're on the 26th floor, they're looking for Bell. Um, I would have to imagine that they're gonna probably have to set up a camp or something somewhere, and then they're gonna have to rest up and recuperate their strength and everything. Uh, we also don't know if they're low on items and everything of healing things because right now, you know, they're kind of grasping at straws, but. They got a party behind them um, that is going to trail their tail to try to help them in this situation. Who knows what's going to happen next. Um, we do cut over to Bell and Ryu, but they're just kind of just sitting there and that's kind of it. But um, nice swerve of expectations on how the way they were going to prevent their deaths. But uh, luckily enough for Cassandra, her premonitions work and, you know, saved her. So I'm still of the opinion that after they get out of this whole situation, probably at the end of the season... If some characters don't tragically die, I can definitely see where, you know, they start believing like, oh no, Cassandra's a freaking, she's she's a true speaker. These these premonitions were absolutely right. We would have all freaking died um, if not for her, which, you know, Daphne makes a mention about that. And I'm like, well then trust her fucking premonitions, clown. But it is what it is. But I know I saw the episode of Don Machi. Um, so yeah, but anyways, I'm gonna get out of here. If you guys like the video, leave a like, put in the comment section your thoughts on this week's episode of Domaji, as well as if you want to get more Domaji content or any other anime content I upload to the channel. Till then, guys, stay safe out there and have a great rest of your day. Peace.